This week's Caldera Chronicles, Yellowstone Volcano Observatory. Why do we monitor carbon dioxide emissions in Yellowstone and how? Well, they've already told us previously that they have a tremendous amount of carbon dioxide emitted every single day from Yellowstone alone. 40,000 tons of carbon dioxide daily. And because of this huge amount of carbon dioxide emitted every single day from Yellowstone, they examined and found that under the magma chamber they have a massive magma reservoir and thus hence the 40,000 tons of carbon dioxide emitted every single day. Carbon dioxide emitted from Yellowstone magmatic hydrothermal system has a number of characteristics that make it an important gas to monitor including its great abundance, partial magnet magmatic origin, and that it can provide information in the depth on the depth of the magma beneath the surface. And in this week's Yellowstone Caldera Chronicles, we found out how scientists are monitoring this important gas species, carbon dioxide, and whether or not they are seeing any changes in the carbon dioxide emissions over time. And this is uh, the November 18th, 2019 Caldera Chronicles, yesterday. They say, why do we monitor carbon dioxide emissions in Yellowstone, and how? This is written by collaborators of Yellowstone Volcano Observatory, and this week's contributions from Jennifer Lewicki, research geologist with the U.S. Geological Survey, Menlo Park, California. The carbon dioxide CO2 emitted from the Yellowstone Magmatic Hydrothermal System has a number of characteristics that make it an important gas to monitor, including its great abundance, partial magmatic origin, and that it can provide information on the depth of the magma beneath the surface. And thus, this is how they found out of the concerning the magma reservoir underneath the magma chamber. In the early 1900s, it was recognized by Eugene Thomas Allen and Arthur Lewis Day, geochemists from Carnegie Institute of Washington, that Yellowstone gases are rich in carbon dioxide. In fact, except for steam, carbon dioxide is typically the most abundant. That's 90% of the gases emitted from the Yellowstone magmatic hydrothermal system is carbon dioxide. And estimates of that rate at which carbon dioxide is emitted across Yellowstone suggest that it is among the highest of any volcanic system in the world. It's important to note that this amount of very small compared to the anthropogenic or human-caused CO2 emissions, a significant portion of this CO2 originates from degassing of basaltic magma beneath Yellowstone. Measuring the amount of CO2 that's emitted from a volcanic system and how it changes over time is particularly useful because it provides hints about possible changes in the depth of the magma beneath the surface, much like a bottle of soda which contains carbon dioxide, CO2, dissolved in the liquid, CO2 and other gases like sulfur, chlorine, fluorine and helium are dissolved in the magma. When the cap is tight, the, it's tightly on the soda bottle, the, the pressure inside the bottle is high and the CO2 remains dissolved in the soda. When the cap is taken off, the pressure on the liquid decreases and the CO2 bubbles out of the liquid and is released into the air. Similarly, when magma is at great depth beneath the surface, the weight of the earth above it acts like a cap, maintaining high pressure that causes gases to dissolve in the magma. However, when the magma begins to migrate upwards towards the surface, pressures on the magma decrease and gases are able to bubble and escape. Because different gases have different solubilities in magma, they are released at different pressures and depths. Carbon dioxide happens to be one of the least soluble gases in magma, so can escape from the magma at great pressure and depth. Other sulfur, chlorine, and fluorine gases are more soluble and escape from the magma at shallower depths. Therefore, measuring the rate at which CO2 is emitted from the volcanic system its abundance relative to other gases, and how these factors change over time 
can provide early warnings of when magma enters the Earth's deep crust and its subsequent movement upwards towards the surface. The amounts of CO2 and other gases emitted from Yellowstone thermal features, such as the springs and the fumaroles, have traditionally been measured by collecting gas samples and analyzing their chemical composition in the laboratory. The rate at which CO2 is emitted from the ground has also been mapped across thermal areas using a portable backpack mounted CO2 flux meter. Both of these techniques have provided valuable information on how the chemical compositions of gases and emissions of CO2 vary in space across Yellowstone. However, to better understand how gas compositions and CO2 emissions change over time, we need to make measurements more frequently and year-round with automated instruments. With the goal of monitoring potential magmatic and hydrothermal activity, oh, they're showing us something here, oh, they're showing, I'm sorry, they're showing us a little uh, steam vent right next to the pathway here, as you can see. Okay, uh, where were we? Let's go back to this now. With the goal of monitoring potential magmatic and hydrothermal activity, the Yellowstone Volcano Observatory has installed and tested two types of instrumentation in Yellowstone thermal areas over the past several years. The first type of instrument, an eddy covariant station, makes high-frequency measurements of atmosphere CO2 concentrations and wind speeds in three directions. Calculate CO2 emissions based on these measurements every half hour and telemeters data to the USGS. Okay, there we have a broader view of the geysers. They still are not showing us uh, Old Faithful for some reason. It's not time for it to erupt yet, I guess. It's about noon time there now. You can see it's very cloudy and it's uh, there's uh, slight snow flurries. And we don't see any visitors. It doesn't mean it's closed, it's just nobody's there. Now, um, going back to what we were saying from the uh, Caldera Chronicles, the second type instrument type, the multi-gas station, makes regular measurements of CO2 and water and sulfur gas concentrations in the air downwind of gas vents. Today, eddy covariants and multi-GAS instruments have measured substantial background changes in uh, carbon dioxide, water, H2O that is, H2S concentrations, and CO2 emissions on a daily basis, largely caused by variations in the weather, while SO2 has not been detected. Gas concentrations and emissions have been re relatively stable over the longer term, however, and have not suggested changes in the deeper hydrothermal and magmatic systems. After background variations are well uh, characterized, the goal of Yellowstone Volcano Observatory Gas Monitoring Program is to detect anomalies that could provide indications of potential magma movement beneath Yellowstone should it occur.
If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media, and not certainly on not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece, in Kapota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.